What's up guys, Casey with Going Brack Racing YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about how carburetors work. We're getting everything back ready to go for the racing season. You got to clean all this up. This is carburetor off the Nova. Uh, number one, you got two types of carburetors that are commonly used in bracket racing setups. Uh, you'll have the Holly 4150 and you'll have the Holly 4500. Uh, the 4500 is what you hear commonly referred to as a dominator. Uh, the difference is a dominator's overall main body will be larger than a 4150, which accommodates larger venturis, larger throttle blades, uh, which gives you the larger CFM. Uh, the base plate will also be different, so you'll actually need a different intake uh, to accommodate a 4500 or a 4150, whichever one you choose. The intake needs to match up with that because your bolt pattern will be different due to the base plate size. I think some intakes can accommodate both, uh, but you want to check that to make sure. So. I guess we'll get right to it. We'll start talking about what all we got here. So this is a 950 CFM Holly double pumper that was done by Ken Jones Performance in Walnut Hill, Illinois. Uh, I'll leave all of his information in the description down below if you guys wanna get in contact with him. Uh, in my opinion, he's one of the best alcohol carburetor gurus in this whole game. Um, but right now we'll go into uh, things on the outside kind of, uh, Things like this. Uh, some of you might wonder what these do. These are actually the idle air screws. Uh, turning them out richens up the uh, fuel mixture off idle. Turning them in will lean it out off idle. So if you ever have any kind of stumbling issue, things like that, uh, whenever you go on the two-step, you're gonna wanna turn these out. And there's four of these all together, one on each metering block on all four sides. You want them all to be out an equal amount or in an equal amount however you want to look at it so if you have for example this one if you have it one and a half turns out then you want this one this one and this one all one and a half turns out because they all control each different venturi separately so like i said this is a holly double pumper which means that there are two accelerator pumps on this carburetor one here one here You'll either have 30 or 50 cc's. These are 30. Uh, that's the quantity of fuel that they'll hold in excess from the fuel bowl down in here. Your 50s will be quite a bit deeper, literally about twice as much deeper because 60 would be double 30. Um, but anyways, you'll either have typically a 30 or a 50 foot brake car. Sometimes you'll have 150 and 130. Um, dominators, you usually have 250s, maybe larger, I'm not sure. Um, but anyways, what these do is whenever the throttle blade opens, it actuates this arm, which pressurizes that diaphragm and pushes that excess fuel straight out of these squirters, straight into the carburetor, right into the Venturi, uh, which will help you with any kind of stumbling off the line. Uh, anytime that uh, you have any kind of stumbling off the line, there's a million different things you can do. Before you change your squirter size, I would highly recommend that you contact somebody that's a carb specialist like Ken Jones at Ken Jones Performance uh, because there's a million different ways to fix that type of stuff. So now that we've talked about all that, let's talk about kind of what's going on here, which is called the main body of the carburetor because this is the all one piece of the carburetor. So these four barrels here, the main area of this is called Venturi. Uh, so how do Venturis work? Uh, well, basically, Suction from the cylinders of a running engine will pull air through the venturis. A venturi has a slight taper at the center, um, which will cause air to speed up from a pressure drop, which will cause suction on the boosters, which are these guys, uh, and allow fuel to be delivered into the intake. So we might as well start with the boosters next. Uh, a lot of times you're gonna have an annular uh, down boosters or straight boosters. These are down boosters because this physically goes down roughly at a 45 degree angle. You might be able to see it on this one a little bit easier. The reason that is, uh, you'll see this a lot of times in high performance type applications anyway, but the reason that is, is the booster placement, uh, meaning where it is in relation to the top of the Venturi, uh, like that taper I was talking about earlier, uh, where this booster is placed where the ring is placed inside the venturi higher or lower is going to affect how strong of a signal this booster will receive because the air will be flowing at a faster or lower pace 
uh, depending on where it's placed up or down within the Venturi. So that being said, we might as well switch the air bleeds next. You have two different air bleeds on each Venturi. So your outermost air bleeds are for your idle circuit and your innermost air bleeds closest to the squirter of your high speed circuit. So how do those work? Uh, so basically think of air bleeds as if you have a crack in a straw at a restaurant. Uh, the larger the crack, the less liquid can be sucked up through the straw. Um, thus we can expect the larger the air bleed, the more air and less fuel will then be fed through the emulsions, uh, something like that. So I'm sure everybody's had a cracked straw at a restaurant before. Obviously, wherever the crack is, uh, you might get more air, less air. Uh, but the more air you're getting in that straw, the less air or the less liquid you can suck up through the straw. So hopefully that kind of makes sense on how those air bleeds work. So now we're gonna actually take off these fuel bowls, kind of show you what's inside so we can explain how the needle seat works, which is right here, and the float works within the uh, float bowl. So we're gonna take these apart real quick. Um, literally all you gotta do, these, I think these are like eight millimeters, something like that. Let's pull all these out. If there were fuel, if there was fuel in the float bowls right now, you'd obviously want something to catch the fuel because once you take these lower bolts out, there's gonna be fuel spraying all over the place. Not spraying, I guess, dripping, whatever you wanna say. Simple as that, come right off, so. Here's your float. This is obviously what is controlled. Uh, your fuel sits down here. This is how it sits whenever it's sitting on the carburetor. So your float will actually go up and down with the fuel that comes in the carburetor through this inlet, comes in, comes in through the needle and seat, and then your float will literally float up and down in the carburetor. And what this is doing, whenever the float comes up, it's actually shutting off a window in the needle and seat, which is regulating the flow of the fuel in through this inlet. This would be connected to your actual fuel line coming from your regulator. So your fuel comes in here, comes through the needle and seat, which fills this float bowl. And whenever this float reaches a determined height, it is closing off a window within the needle and seat and no more fuel will actually come in the carburetor. So now we'll take this needle and seat out here and show you how that works. All you need is a 5 8 wrench for this guy, and then you need something to undo this lock nut. So a lot of people will start screwing out this uh, lock nut, lock screw, whatever you want to call it. And uh, this is not what sets your float height. All this does is lock your float into position. This is how you actually manipulate where the needle and seat is, which will inevitably adjust your float height. So we're gonna take this screw out just because it'll be easier to show you what's going on here. So this screw, like I said, all it does is locks that lock nut in place. And maybe this will come off and I can kind of show you what it's got going on here. So this is the top of the needle and seat. Obviously everything's flat. You have to, whenever you rotate this nut, this is obviously bringing your needle and seat up within the fuel bowl, which will allow this float to go higher. So we'll take this guy out here real quick. And what you'll have here is your actual needle and seat. And this is the window I was talking about where it regulates the fuel. So whenever this comes all the way up, you can see it's obviously closing off that window. When that's all the way up, no more fuel can flow. And whenever it comes down, more fuel flows. So as this float goes up, it closes this needle valve. And when it goes down, the needle valve can open and allow more fuel to come in the fuel bowl. So I'll give you just an idea of kind of how this works. So this is how your bowl sits on your carburetor here. So obviously your fuel would be in the bottom because it would come in, obviously it settles at the bottom of the bowl and then this float floats. So we're gonna flip this upside down because it'll be easier to show you. So imagine your fuel's down here in the fuel bowl. Whenever you're screwing your float in, so as if you're tightening it, 
You see how that float is raising in the bowl? So that's what I mean by adjusting your float height and allowing your uh, needle and seat to regulate how much fuel is in here. So as this float goes down, less fuel will be allowed in the bowl. Another thing that happens commonly will be whenever, whenever you have to adjust your needle and seat, a lot of the times it will be due to the fact that you'll have what's called running in, fuels dripping in, whatever you wanna call it, through the boosters, and they'll just be little drips and drips and drips, and it'll, it'll make your car not idle properly, uh, won't heat up properly, there's a lot of problems it'll cause. Uh, it might even get to the point where it's trying to flood at idle so it'll die. So what you're gonna do is you wanna turn this in as if you're tightening it, which is going to allow less fuel in the bowl, which will then cause that to stop happening. That's 99% of the carburetor issues out there, that's what it is. So, on to the next thing, which would be the actual metering block. So let me take this guy off here real quick and I'll get right back to you. So these are your metering blocks. This is pretty much where all the magic happens and a lot of uh, your carburetor specialists have their own way of doing things. Obviously your jets sit in here. Uh, if you're messing with this at all, then your jets, I mean, everybody kind of knows how your jets work. Uh, this is your main supply to anything going on in the carburetor. Um, this is the front bowl, so it just has the regular short jets in there, which is why this has a brass float in the bowl. The back bowl has what's called jet extensions, or you can have just a longer jet. Um, but the reason that happens is because whenever you take off, obviously this being the back bowl, whenever you accelerate, your car is having your inertia push back, which is making the fuel inside the bowl, if you have these normal sized jets, the fuel will actually run away from the jets. So your jet will physically be about twice as far out. And then you'll have a notched float, those black floats, they'll have a little notch in each one to accommodate that jet extension going under it so it doesn't interfere with the float level. So that being said, you heard me talking about emulsions earlier with the air bleeds and everything. Your emulsions are all in here. You can have three, four, five, two, six. I think you can have however many they really want. Like I said, each car builder is gonna have their own way of doing things, but basically everything comes in through here and this, these kind of have a lot of black magic going on. Sometimes guys will have certain ones plugged and other ones open. They'll have different sizes they drill them to. Uh, I don't really know enough about what that's going to do. Um, pretty much the only people that do are a lot of times people who do this for a living. So if you want to know more about how these emulsions work or uh, more than likely just buy a whole carburetor from somebody, I highly recommend you get in contact with somebody like Ken Jones at Ken Jones Performance Carburetors. Again, his stuff's down in the description below um, and he can explain how these things work a whole lot better than I can. So. Thanks for watching this week's How To Tuesday video. Looks like the dog's ready to go <laughs> inside. So uh, we'll talk to you guys all next week. Thanks.